Hi, my name is Michael Pickford. I'm the director of sales here at Redbird Flight Simulations. And today, what we're gonna do is set up uh, a yoke, throttle, and uh, rudders from the Redbird Alloy Home Simulation Equipment product line. Uh, we're setting it up today with Microsoft Flight Simulations 2020 new sim software. Uh, there's been a lot of buzz about the software. It looks great, and I've had a lot of fun practicing with it. So let's get started. Okay, so here we are on the main screen for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. And what we're gonna do is run through a calibration of the yoke, throttle, and rudders as well. Uh, one quick thing I wanted to mention is that we have the TH3 here. Uh, it's a single engine, uh, complex throttle quadrant. Um, we also sell the TH1, uh, which is a single engine complex. Uh, it's gonna be the vernier style. Uh, that push-pull style throttle, as well as the TH2. Uh, it's a twin engine throttle. Uh, now, obviously the single engine uh, TH1 is gonna be the same style of calibration uh, as the TH3, uh, whereas the TH2, you'll do the same things for your throttle prop and mixture. You'll just do it twice, one for each lever. So that being said, said uh, let's get started. We're gonna go over here on the top to our options screen. Then we're going to go to the right window for controls. And as soon as you plug each control in, you'll see the name show up up here in the list. We're not going to go through keyboard and mouse. That's going to be individual. Um, well, we don't sell those, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, the J uh, rudder up here, the TH3 right there, and the YK1. So we'll go ahead and start with the YK1. Now, uh, one thing, there is a sensitivity bar up here, and this is gonna be where you can fine tune uh, after you fly a little bit, maybe it doesn't roll like you want to, maybe it doesn't pitch like you want to, uh, but you can come in here and fine tune uh, certain settings. So you can see just by doing this, uh, you can see how the yoke behaves. Now, uh, we also recommend that you go into the window setting of your computer. Uh, or whatever um, you know, operating system uh, control calibration setting uh, to calibrate before you jump into uh, Microsoft Flight Sim. So um, the first thing that we're gonna do uh, is come down here to filter. Right now, this is on assigned. Nothing's there because nothing's programmed. Uh, all is gonna have literally every single um, control that you can calibrate. Um, what we wanna do is kinda whittle it down a little bit uh, and get to just the essentials. Um, you can minimize uh, certain uh, submenus. Uh, this one happens to be camera and we have a toggle switch here on the YK1. It's a five position toggle switch. So we can look left, right, up, down. Uh, and then there's also a center button uh, to push. So we'll, we'll uh, calibrate that part first. Uh, so let's scroll down until we get to right about here. Uh, cockpit look down. Um, personal preference here, you can either push it up um, to where the camera looks down, kind of like trim. Uh, I prefer that. Uh, so I'm gonna hit this start scanning button and push up and then validate. Really easy process to get that done. Uh, cockpit look left. I'm gonna hit start scanning, push left, and we're done. Then next is look right, start scanning, and we're done, validate. And then cockpit look up, and I can just push this down. Uh, also, lastly, the flight sim software will detect the buttons that are on the YK1 yoke. So you can also manually enter this, um, but I prefer this much easier method. And then if you happen to select something that has already been defined, then it will throw up an error. So actually let's clear this input. If you wanted to try it again, you could clear the input, uh, but we'll uh, see if we can get it to trigger an error. So it's gonna say this is already in use somewhere else. Do you wanna bind it anyway? Uh, this was, let's call it a mistake. So we'll clear that current input again and then try it again. So cockpit look up. Oh, I well, did it again. There we go. And validate. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is the aileron. Uh, so I'm gonna use this search bar over here 
uh, to make it a little bit easier. Come on, keyboard. A. There we go. And what we're looking for is the aileron axis. Uh, if you select aileron left, roll left, aileron right, roll right, it will at some arbitrary point just trigger the ailerons to activate. Uh, so it's not a very realistic uh, scenario. So we want to define the axis. So aileron axis, start scanning, move the aileron, and it'll populate that X axis. Validate, okay. Now we want to do the elevator axis. Okay, there it is. Exact same thing. Come back, push forward. There's our Y axis and validate. Okay, now the YK1 also has electric trim over here on the left side. Uh, obviously push on the bottom part of the rocker switch to trim up top part to trim down, but to make it a little bit easier, we're gonna say elevator trim, okay? Elevator down, push down, validate, elevator up, start scanning, and we're done. Okay, next on the YK1 is just the autopilot disconnect and the push to talk buttons. So for those, we want to search for, um, let's see, autopilot. And there are a bunch of different autopilot settings you can have on there. I'm used to just having a autopilot off. So on the autopilot off setting, I had to scroll all the way down to the bottom, click here, start scanning, and hit the autopilot off. Validate, and for push to talk, we're gonna search for radio and com. Start scanning, and we're done. That way, if anybody has a third-party ATC software that they ever wanna use, um, then that's how uh, you would activate that uh, push to talk. Okay, so the YK1 is done. Next up is the TH3. So, we're just gonna work from right to left here. So the first thing we're gonna do is flaps. Now, one thing that I learned is that you don't wanna have extend flaps or retract flaps as you're setting. Um, this switch is not a position switch, so you don't set flap settings here. You're gonna just one notch down that way, one notch up this way. So the first thing we'll do is decrease flaps. And then next, we'll validate that, will be increase flaps. Validate, okay? Next up is going to be mixture. And we're always gonna be looking for this axis. So mixture, axis. Axis Z, I'm gonna validate that. Then we're gonna do uh, the propeller. And propeller axis. Right here, just propeller axis. Start scanning. And there's your Y. On uh, the twin engine throttle, the TH2, you'll have a propeller axis one, propeller axis two, or mixture axis one, mixture axis two, so you'll do those individually. And last will be throttle axis. Here, scan, and there's the X. Validate. Uh, finally, for the uh, throttle quadrants, we have the landing gear. Ah, one 
second. Let's try searching for gear. There we go. Uh, we'll do gear down. Start scanning. Validate. Gear up. Scanning. And validate. Okay, that will take care of the TH3. Um, one thing, I didn't do this on the YK1, uh, but you can do another filter here. Uh, this is gonna show you uh, the, all of the essentials that you've done on the TH3, or excuse me, all of the assigned uh, things that you've just programmed. So flight control surfaces, we got our flaps, uh, landing gear, we have gear up, gear down, and then power management, we have the mixture, prop, and throttle. Actually, another thing I can show is that you have this bar underneath each of the axes, and that will give you the range of motion. You can see throttle moving down at the bottom, propeller moving as well, and mixture. So just something good to take a look at, make sure everything's working properly. Okay, that'll do it for the TH3. Now we're gonna go into the rudder. We're gonna get this down to just the essentials. And here we are on the brakes. So another thing to note uh, is on the RD1s, uh, there's a potentiometer uh, that will detect how hard you're pressing the brakes. It's not an on-off, uh, and that goes for both. So you wanna select the brake axis. Okay, so left brake axis. We're gonna start scanning, and it'll populate it there. Validate that. Right brake axis. Start scanning. And validate that right there. Okay. One thing I can see already is that this left brake is showing engaged and the right brake is not. Now, I'm not pushing on the left brake at all, so it looks like we're going to have to reverse that axis. Now you can see that both brakes are disengaged right now, and I'll Take a look by pushing both brakes and now they're activated. So that should work properly, but we'll find out pretty quick if that's working or not. Uh, next thing is the flight control surface, just the rudder axis. Right here. Start scanning. And there we go. Validate. All right, and we'll go ahead and double check that is working properly, looks pretty good. Okay, now let's apply and save. Then we'll go back uh, into the main menu, start a flight, and see how everything's working. To Austin Bergstrom. And we don't need to make a whole flight plan or anything. All we want to do is uh, take off and make sure we did everything correctly. All right. Takes a little while to uh, get everything loaded up, so I'll meet you on the runway. Okay, so here we are on the runway at Austin Bergstrom. And what I want to do right now is just take a look around the cockpit and make sure everything is looking properly or looking uh, in the right direction. How about that? Okay, so looking down at all the flight controls, uh, take a look at the yoke. That's looking pretty good. Yep. Okay. Got our throttle here. That's moving as though it should. Propeller, I can see that moving. Mixture's going well. Uh, see our flaps. That is correct. And up we go. Okay, I'm uh, not going to touch the gear, though. Uh, the up and down on the uh, hat switch is working well. I can look around, also verify my flight controls are working. Look around, okay. And then um, won't be able to notice anything with autopilot or push to talk. Um, let's get this thing centered. Oops. Here, we can also use the mouse to fine tune and Okay, so trim is not right. There's a trim wheel. I'm not sure if y'all can see that or not, but the trim wheel is not moving. 
and the yoke actually is, looks like it's trying to move. So chances are I mapped something incorrectly. So I'm gonna pause this. I'm gonna go, I just hit the escape button. Uh, this brings me back up to the controls menu. Then I'm gonna go to my YK1 and take a look at the uh, elevator. Okay, elevator down, pitch down. I don't think that is correct. So, because that doesn't say trim, I think it's actually just trying to control the yoke input. So I'm gonna clear this input, then I'm gonna clear the elevator pitch up input, validate it, then I'm gonna search for trim. And here we go, elevator trim down. This is what we need. Start scanning, reapply, validate. Elevator trim nose up, start scanning, and reapply, validate. Apply and save down at the bottom. Then we go back to uh, the main menu right up here and the resume. So take a look at our trim wheel and there we go. We got trim. All right, so. Everything looks good. I'm gonna take out my parking brake, uh, put a notch of flaps in, and bring it to full power. Go, you can see our rudder axis is working well. And just for the sake of showing that the left turn, there we go, all right. We're in the green. Forgive me, Bonanza pilots. I don't know my V-speeds in your aircraft. All right, it's a little tough to see. I'm gonna use the keyboard. You can actually uh, shift the camera up. You can actually go left or right. We do have a positive rate, so our gear is coming up. I can zoom in. Yeah, I saw a gear message that everything was coming up. Yoke is working pretty well. Uh, airspeed's getting low, push down a little bit. Okay. And we'll also bring our flaps up. And just a little rudder test. Go, right rudder, left rudder, working as intended. Okay, so we just calibrated everything. Again, we use it as a single engine aircraft. Uh, if you are, or excuse me, a single engine throttle, uh, if you're flying a single engine aircraft with this, everything should behave as normal. If I was to load a twin engine aircraft, then my throttle, prop, and mixture are going to control uh, both, um, uh, both engines at the same time. Um, I can use a uh, toggle switch to come down. If I'm flying a twin, I'd be able to grab the left engine throttle control and bring it back, or the mixture bring it back if you wanted to do a, a simulated engine out or something like that. Um, then for those of you that have the TH2 throttle, um, when you're flying, only the left throttle, left prop, and left mixture are going to work for uh, the single engine. Uh, the other knobs are just kind of dummy knobs. They won't do anything until you load a, uh, a twin engine aircraft. So. That about does it. I'm just gonna keep on flying here until they turn the camera off. Thank you everybody for watching. Uh, I hope you learned a little bit about how our products uh, work with Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. Uh, you can join us at simulators.redbirdflight.com for more information on the Alloy product line or retail at redbirdflight.com uh, to build a shopping cart and get started flying. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us at info at redbirdflight.com or call us at 512-301-0718. Thanks again and enjoy the rest of your migration.